Terry Cleaver on Dover Community Radio. This is Terry Cleaver here. The date is Sunday the 4th of March 2012. I'm here at the Ramada Hotel in Whitfield speaking to Martin Young, Chairman of the Harriet Quimby Centenary Project. Hello Martin, how are you today? Good morning Terry, I'm very well thank you. Nice to uh, interview me today. Although the weather's horrible, I'm sure we've got a wonderful... A project to explain to the citizens of the Dover area. It is a very beautiful day, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, could you tell us a little bit about who Harriet Quimby actually was, please? Okay. Well, I never knew about Harriet Quimby until about four years ago. And being a Doverian by birth, I uh, thought to myself, well, if this woman flew the English Channel in 1912, why didn't I know about that? Why wasn't I taught about her at school? like I was with Blairio and Matthew Webb and Charles Rolls. And reading local papers as I do, I um, read about Harriet Quimby in an article that was written by Lorraine Sensical, who's a local historian. And um, it literally went from there, to be honest with you. I got involved on a, on a very, very broad basis. And uh, recently, over the past two years, that uh, activity has got even greater. So what are you actually planning to do to celebrate the 100 years since Harriet flew the channel? Well, one of the things that was mentioned in in the article that I read from Lorraine was that there was an initiative to put a statue in her honour on Dover Seafront. And I thought, well, yeah, why not? That uh, makes great sense to me. The statues of other women pioneers and such like around the country, so why shouldn't there be one of a woman in Dover? And the idea is that, um, although time is now of an essence, that uh, we celebrate her centenary over the weekend of the 14th and 15th of April. Uh, That's uh, obviously this year. Uh, We've got in plan to have an unveiling of a a memorial plaque, which we're having made at the Ramada Hotel. We've had agreement with the manager there, or the owners there, to do that. And then during the weekend, we're going to have... the local AT Air, Air, Air Training Corps to uh, do a military march for us down through the town. And we're also having a Bleary 011, which is coming over from Holland, which will be on display at the Dover Transport Museum. And then throughout the year, we're going to be uh, displaying and uh, making events at the Dover Regatta and so on throughout the year until December. And in that time, we're hoping to, well, we've now got it planned to put a statue to Harriet, a very, very emotive, modern statue, nothing like a a memorial, but a statue to her achievement on the cliffs overlooking the eastern docks, which will be pointing towards um, Boulogne and Calais, which is where Harriet landed. So she actually flew from Dover, did she, originally? Yes, she did. Louis Blériot flew from Sanga outside outside Calais, to Dover and landed at North Fall Meadow, where his memorial is now. A thing that many children in Dover, including myself, would play on as in their in their childhood. But uh, Harriet, and again, I was amazed to find out when I actually started doing the research, flew from an airfield at Whitfield, which was literally just by the side of Archers Court Road. And from there, she took off at 5:35 in the morning of the 16th of April. She flew across Dover Castle and headed towards Cap Grenade and uh, hopefully to find Calais. But unfortunately, due to foggy conditions, she lost her way effectively, made landfall and then flew to a place which she knew, which was Hardelow, where Louis Blériot had his house and uh, an aircraft hangar. That's a strange coincidence, isn't it? Yes, it is. But... Um, She'd known of Louis Blériot, that was her main, main ambition in life. After hearing of Louis Blériot's channel flight in America, she decided to take a pilot's licence. And she was the first woman pilot in America to gain her pilot's licence in August of 1911. And that was a month before Hilda Hewlett, who was the first British woman pilot, so she is a, a very, very pioneering and unique person in that respect. Self-funded, never relied on anybody, and she flew in a self-designed purple satin uh, wool-lined flying costume. Very, very unique. 
Are you using the costume as part of the statue and the memorial and the plans that you're involved with? Yes, we will be. The, the statue we're hoping will be 2.7 metres high, made of stainless steel. And that will be placed on the cliffs so it catches the morning sun and the evening sun. But during the night and early evening and early morning, it will be, it will be lit from below by two purple lights to shine onto, onto the stainless steel and reflect that colour. We have um, a team of seamstresses in Dover, in the Dover area, that are following plans that have been outlined plans, and they are actually making a purple costume with you know the, the costume top and the, the uh, pantaloons that Harriet uh, can be seen in the photographs. And uh, the only thing that we now need are the boots and the flying gloves <laughs> and, and the goggles, which I'm sure we can get from somewhere. But it will be very, very contemporary to her time, and that will be displayed at the, uh, the Dover Museums. So it's a very worthwhile locally backed project then? Yes it is. Um, the, the people that are involved at the moment are uh, my my uh, secretary Andrew Cooper who runs a business in Dover called Fabric Ferry. I'm, I'm very very pleased with the help that him and his wife have been giving me and other people that are now coming on board and after four years of, of hard slog everything is now coming together and I can only say that the work that's being put in is absolutely incredible and we we will achieve we will be successful but we just would like more help more uh, understanding of what we're doing from the local communities especially the business communities to raise the capital that we need although we are being sponsored by the heritage lottery fund there is still a lot of stuff that we need to consider uh, planning consents etc so there is a lot more input that, that people can do for us because at the end of the day both Andrew and I have got day jobs, and you know day jobs come before anything else. But um, we do intend to to succeed on this and be successful. So personally, then, why do you think that Harriet should be remembered? Harriet was a very, very um, woman ahead of her time. She she was a very, very th free free thinker. She was a, a photojournalist. And this is going back into the late 19th century. She, she travelled the world taking photographs of various tribes, people in various countries. She, she wrote for Leslie's Illustrated uh, in America. And uh, she also was, in her early days, a scriptwriter for a film company and also starred in some of the first uh, silent movies. And the interesting thing is that we've had news this week that um, the original company, which was called Biograph, that, that, that uh, ran from California, are actually making a documentary drama on her life. Really? And they've got a, an actress called um, Donna Marie Rocker, who they've got on board to actually act as Harriet. And when, when I mentioned this to Andrew the other day, we, we were just absolutely amazed that... Um, the Americans are now getting involved because she she's honoured in America, but not in a great way. She's not even mentioned in Great Britain. The British Women Pilots Association don't want to be associated with her. The um, the Royal Aeronautical Society have said that her achievement is not of global significance, and we just do not understand this attitude. And Harriet should be commemorated in England, especially in Dover, where she's okay. part of the history of Dover. So it's not just back locally then, the project's back worldwide, is it? It's getting that way. We've had um, contact with America this week, and also we've, we've um, had contact uh, for about three or four months now, isn't it, with one of her descendants in America, and uh, this woman, <laughs> believe it or not, is an, is an aircraft pilot, a light oh, aircraft you. pilot. And it was just so, what's the word I'm looking for? So unusual to, to find that she had links with, you know, with her predecessor. And uh, we're hoping to get her over sometime this year with her daughter to uh, join one of the events. And um, in Holland, we have a gentleman called Jart Mestang who works for, um, or, or is associated with a, a company over there, which owns a Blario 11. Really? And um, he has kindly offered to bring that over 
and we've got sponsorship through various companies, transport companies and shipping companies to actually get the aircraft shipped over for that weekend. So it will be on display and he is very, very keen. He, is, he was involved with 2009 Blerio celebrations and um, he knows the ropes and he's, he's, again, him and his team are very pleased to be on board. And it'll be it'll be really nice when we get the uh, get the plane over here and see it ticking over at the Dover Transport Museum. And in addition, this week we found that there's a three meter wingspan model of Blario 11, which is for sale. It's still in its box. It was built by it was it's made by a famous aero modeler called um, David Boddington, and um, the gentleman who is selling it, is absolutely amazed that Harriet is being finally honoured after all this time. He said it's something that's been very, very long time coming. And he's a gentleman who must be in his 80s, who lives in Norfolk. So things are coming together very, very quickly. And as I said earlier on, we do need more people to help Andrew and myself to uh, get, the, get the year organised. How can other people actually get involved with the Harriet Quimby project? Anything really, if they if they want to write letters or anything for us, Andrew, have you got any comments? If people want to contact us, uh, they can do so through um, the website, which is hqcp.org.uk, and we're very willing to take volunteers who are prepared to do anything, um, it, it, from basic admin uh, to... Uh, volunteering to be stewards at the regatta. Um, we have a, a, a significant display at the regatta and, and we're turning it into a significant standalone event within the regatta. Um, there are a, a whole list of, of things, but it's the adage that many hands make light work and that's really how we're, we're viewing it. I hope you get a lot of volunteers to help out. So what's the actual... Um locations that are going to be used for the statue and the memorial okay well the the uh, the memorial plaque I, I don't like the word memorial it's it, it sounds it's got significance with death and etc this is to do with an achievement a significant achievement and the the plaque will be based at the Ramada Hotel we're, we're hoping for it to be outside where it can be viewed with with a panel that gives the history because it's very very near to the airfield uh, the statue will be on the cliffs above the eastern docks by the visitor centre up there and we've got a wonderful idea and plans for how it will be sited. National Trust are actually in support of us great. but we need to have people there to do the scrub clearance which is what we were talking about for volunteers uh, to make the site safe so that we can actually go in and get people there to look at perhaps a mock-up before then and even perhaps helping to make the mock-up itself which we need to do for sponsorship purposes. But uh, Andrew and I are talking about maybe getting that underway fairly shortly, but if anybody can come come aboard within the next week or two, then I'm sure we can put the plans to them and see how we go. But the main intention of all of this is not just to put a statue up, it's to actually provide education for children and to, and to encourage girls, especially into the aviation industry and engineering, and also uh, young boys as well, because we do need people in engineering to make this country great again. And this this part of Kent, I, I was born here, I've lived here many, many years, I don't live here now. I just feel so sorry that things have gone the way they are. And there, there's opportunities there. Why, why not take them? Why put things in the way? Why put barriers in the way? So we on that score... We're producing a, an educational pack with a DVD. It'll be 20 minutes. It, it uh, won't be too stodgy. It'll be very um, <clears throat> informative. And there will be a, uh, a document with that, a, a booklet with that, which will give the history of, of Harriet, her personality, and the design of Blario 11, and um, such like. So it'll be a very, very comprehensive little document. And hopefully we can link it in with the other initiative that's going on in, on the Atlantic side. And then also there'll be a little maquette of the, the statue, which is about uh, two, 20 centimetres high, and uh, other things that we'll have on, on uh, sale throughout the uh, coming months.
So you'll be hoping that that'll make people follow in the footsteps of Blerio and Harriet Quimby then? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah definitely. It's, uh, I've been involved with transport all my life being a railway man. Uh, I'm a railway engineer. But as I said, you know, knowing about Blerio and Matthew Webb and uh, Charles Rolls has always been in the background of my, my existence and um, it's the only way to be. When you think that the, the, the most amazing technology that this country ever created was thrown onto the scrap heap over seven years ago and that was that beautiful, beautiful aircraft called Concorde. Why can't we now, instead of going for hypersonic space and getting to Australia in two hours, why don't we stop flying around the world at 500 miles an hour and go to supersonic but at Mach 1, which mm -hmm. makes things a lot easier for everybody. But people seem to have missed that one. We've got the technology to do that. We need children to actually take that technology forward. I have the same thing in my own industry. We need youngsters to take new technology and innovations forward. Let's open doors for people. Let's create opportunities. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. So why in 1912 was Harriet's achievement actually ignored or forgotten about? Very, very unfortunate circumstances. She flew at 5.35 in the morning of the 16th of April. At 2.20 a.m. on the 15th of April, the Titanic took its final death throes and landed on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean with a loss of over 1,200 lives. And if you can imagine that Harriet had gone to the Daily Mirror and got sponsorship, she'd got a tug lined up to follow her across the English Channel with reporters on and cameramen, film cameramen, only to find that her outstanding achievement had been overshadowed by the sinking of the Titanic. And even now, the news on the, on the television, all the articles that are being published on future programmes that are coming up, are all to do with the Titanic. The Titanic sank a hundred years ago. Haven't we had enough of the Titanic disaster? Let's, let's celebrate something different. Let's celebrate Harriet. Let, let's celebrate that achievement for once. Give somebody that opportunity. Give them that, that kudos that's required. That's where I come from. I don't begrudge the Titanic. I was interested in that as a kid as well. I read the reports when I was about 12. got them out of Dover Public Library. And if I'd have heard of Harriet then, I'd have been absolutely blown away by it as I am today. Are you hoping the work that you're doing this year will bring bringing her back to the forefront of things? Yes, I don't want Harriet overshadowed again by a disaster. I want the sun to shine on her achievement. Do you inform us how people can actually become involved with the event on the 14th and the 15th of April? We would like them to turn up in Dover or at the Ramada Hotel. It will be published on our website and I'm sure we can get some more advertising in the local papers to actually tell the dates and the times where we're going to be. I'd like people to turn up, uh, wear purple for the day because the, the costume will be on display. We're hoping to get a lady to uh, model it for us and hopefully right. next to the Blerio aircraft. So if they can turn up, and also if they can dress up in period costume, which would be brilliant, 1912 period costume, which I think Andy, Michelle and I will be doing, and maybe a few of the others. Andrew's laughing. <laughs> but it should be it should be so funny. And, and I think with the ATA band marching down through the town and on the, you know, at um, the uh, Dover Transport Museum and that, it should be a really nice day out. And finally, how can people actually find out more about the project and uh, get involved? Well, as Andy mentioned, it's the, the website, UCP org.uk. There's, there's telephone numbers they can get hold of Andrew. 01304 or you can call me, Martin Young, but I, I'm in Dunstable, which is where I live at currently, which is on 01582 668 598. We look forward to uh, speaking to you and hopefully helping us. It will be absolutely wonderful. Thanks very much for inviting me here today and uh, we wish you all the best of luck within a very exciting project, guys. Terry, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. The sound of Wycliffe's country. DCR, the channel you want to listen to.